George Not Found, a.k.a. George Davidson. And yes, his name has been public before. He is a Minecraft gamer with 10.1 million subscribers on YouTube and 5 million followers on Twitch. The video from his Twitch stream that he did is called Addressing a Very Serious Allegation. And I already watched the whole thing and I agree with every single point that George Nutbound has made because Katie Bugs has made some mistruths in her statement. And with that, I'll give my response in each section that George Nutbound has responded to. Okay, so this is my side of the story of the two times that I have interacted with Katie Bugs in real life. So the first time that I met her, it was in Dream's hotel room at VidCon. To give context about Dream's hotel room, essentially it was a bigger room than average. It's not just a bed in a room, like a typical hotel room is. Essentially, it's uh, there was a living room, there was a table, and the bedroom was kind of separated from it. And for this reason, we used his hotel room essentially as a place where all of our friends could hang out in. Bitcoin is a four day long event. So we actually used it quite frequently throughout, throughout these four days. And we had creators, friends in and out of this room throughout the whole event. Now, the first night that I actually met Katie, I was with Dream in his hotel room and Dream was in a group chat with five other people. These five people include Katie Bugs, her best friend, and three other of her friends. Now, these five people, they were at an official Bitcoin after party and they wanted to dream they wanted Dream to go meet up with them and hang out with them. But Dream actually didn't want to hang out with them. And the reason is because at the time he was wearing his Dream mask a lot. And he felt uncomfortable wearing it because it's just the whole mask on your face. So he just didn't want to go to the party particularly. He even suggested that they shouldn't come because he was he was assuming that they were they were having more fun where they were. They reassured him that that wasn't the case. They were bored and they wanted to, they wanted him to come. So now these five people um, are trying to come to the hotel. But the problem with that is to get into the hotel, you need to have a Bitcoin creator badge. And only two of the people in the group chat actually had this badge. That was Katie and her best friend. So eventually what happened is Katie and two of her other friends came to Dream's hotel room. This was my first time actually meeting them in real life. I didn't even know who they were before meeting them. And then we essentially just were playing drinking games in the hotel room. We were having fun, talking with each other. Nothing crazy in particular. Now, one thing Casey said retrospectively, looking back at the scenario, is that I was flirting with her throughout the night and that she was uncomfortable with this because of our age difference. At the time, she was 18 and I was 26. Okay, since, since 18 is the age of an adult, the official age of an adult, then clearly Katie Bugs is not a teenager anymore, according to the law itself. Because since she started flirting with George Knockdown first at the age of 18, then it's a non issue at all. She actually assumed I didn't know her age because she had never said it. But then later, I had actually DM'd her on Instagram. And because of this, she says that it is confirmed that I know her age. To give some context to this scenario and why I didn't know her age, my perspective of things is that I am with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where we are doing things that people that are over the age of 21 are doing, like drinking. And also the people that came, came from an event where they had very heavy security. This was an official VidCon after party. And with previous Bitcoin after parties, I even had problems getting into these events. There was one time where they didn't let me in because they couldn't confirm the legitimacy of my UK ID. They said they weren't trained to look at foreign IDs. So they didn't even let me in despite me being 26 at the time. And also since Katie's stream, I've gone back and reviewed texts from the time. And there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband on one of, their hat, one, of their, one of their wrists. So from my perspective, it's a bunch of 21 plus year olds hanging out. I have no reason to think otherwise, other than my Instagram bio, but I just didn't see it. But anyway, nothing actually particularly happened at this 
first night that we were hanging out, everything was very friendly. We went our separate ways, and that's the end of the first night. Then the second time that we hung out was the next night after this. So we wake up next day, we do VidCon stuff. After we're done, that's the final day of VidCon. So VidCon is now technically over, but we have one more night in the hotel before we need to leave the next morning. And actually at this point, I actually had a friend that I had only known online meet up with me for the first time. And the whole time I had known him, he lived in a different country. He was actually living in Japan. And I had told him I was going to VidCon, and he actually just happened to be in California at the same date, so the dates aligned, and we made plans to meet up. Now, he arrived early evening, I think it was around 5, 6 p.m. We were just hanging out in my room. He messaged me, I'm bored, can you come to my room? Let's hang out, essentially. That's what we did. Me and my friend that I just met, <laughs> physically, I mean, I knew him online, went up to Dream's room, and we were hanging out. And again, the same scenario happens from the night before. They are trying to get him to go out to another party that they were at. And same story, Grim didn't want to go, but was open to them coming here. And again, that is what happened. But this time, their friends were actually all able to get it. I don't know how they did it. But Katie, my best friend, and three other of her friends ended up coming to the room, which had me, Grim, and my online friend that I just met. So eight people total in this room at this point. This night was very similar to the one before. We were just hanging out, playing games, drinking, and just having a good time. So something I actually want to point out before I continue with the rest of the story is the way that she phrases some things in her story. Instead of saying that her and the rest of her friends actually wanted to come to the hotel to hang out with us, she said that one friend was invited by Dream, but she didn't want to go alone. So then they decided to go along with her because they were willing to go anywhere. I just think it's important to note already that the story is slightly different from the reality of it and i'll be mentioning this a few more times throughout the rest of the story you can see in these screenshots from the text at the time that they were all trying to come to the hotel and it wasn't just uh oh we're willing to follow her essentially they were all in the group chat and part of the discussion to go to the hotel i also chose to mention my online friend it doesn't really add to the story but she never mentioned him or the eighth person that she brought with so I'm just saying it because that's how it happened. And I feel straight. Another thing that she talks about is how we insisted that she drinks more and that we insisted on playing drinking games when this isn't the case. Again, they had already been drinking at this party before they arrived at the hotel room. And they had also been the ones that were asking to play the drink. Okay, this makes me think that Katie Bugs broke the law because she herself is not supposed to drink until the age of 21. ...to play the drinking games. So instead of us insisting that we play it, they were actually the ones that were asking us. And you can see that in the screenshot here. They had actually texted multiple times, specifically wanting to play this drinking game that we had played the night before. And at this point, I was pretty drunk, and so was basically everyone in this room. It was the last night at VidCon. VidCon's a pretty stressful time. And honestly, a lot of people are happy when it's over. Not that they didn't like it, but uh, it's just a stressful event. There's a lot that you have to do. And when it's over, you just, you're just happy and you want to celebrate. So at this point, we then moved to the couch. There was a couch in the room. And I sit next to Katie. She also says, looking back on the scenario, that she confused her nerves for excitement when I sit next to her. But again, at this moment in time, everything was friendly. Nothing sexual had happened. I'm just literally sitting next to her on the couch. And during this, she was laughing, smiling. She gave no indication that... She was uncomfortable with me sitting this close to her. She also mentions that she was thinking about my age and that I was a lot older than her. Again, she was 18 and I was 26 at the time. And again, to clarify, I actually didn't know how old she was, despite her claiming that I did, just because it was in her bio. And it was clear to anyone there that she was not uncomfortable with me sitting next to her. And eventually, two of the people that came to the hotel room left. Then it was just down to me, Dream, my online friend, Katie, Katie's best friend, and a sixth mutual friend. Next, she says, this is a quote, resorted to playing games on her phone to avoid the awkward situation. Now, I just don't see how this is the case. She's implying that she is using her phone to essentially escape, you know, an, such an awkward scenario that she's in. But that that's just not how it happened. And this is why. She brought up the phone game as kind of a point. The, the game was honestly the central point of the interaction at this part of the night. It was a very social thing. You know, she was... Showing she was moving the person the phone around, 
we were all playing the game and bantering about it, just having fun with the game. So I, I don't see how like she resorted to it and was like using it in that context. She wasn't being awkward at all. There was no sense of uncomfortability from her. She was laughing and playing with everyone. And yeah, I'm just, I'm not really sure why she phrased it like this. We actually continued to send each other high score updates even weeks after the event. To add further context to this moment, we were all actually sitting on the couch that was in the hotel room playing this game on her phone. And during this, me and Katie were at the far end of the couch and we were cuddling together. We had been cuddling for, I'd say, around an hour at this point, playing the game, talking, and and just having fun. And for clarity, I had my hand around her waist above her clothes. So so that means putting your hand above her clothes is not sexual assault. Unlike the way that Katie Fox is phrasing it as, which I don't know why she would do that. So with her statement where she's saying that she's resorting to playing games on her phone, I just don't really understand it. And I think that the picture that she's painting is really dark, when in reality she seemed very happy with the situation, was having a good time, I also want to address a fact that she claimed that would confirm that I know her age. She said that she had answered a question about her age during a drinking game, and we were talking about sex, and that she admitted to everyone in the room that she was 18 and a virgin at the time. I just don't remember this happening. I'm not saying this to just pretend like it didn't happen. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I did not hear it happen. We're not just all sitting down and not moving. It's a, you know, it's a chaotic environment. I could have been getting a drink. I could have been talking to someone else. I just did not know that that was said. Another quote from her stream I want to address, she says, there was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games. They had already been drinking before they arrived. They were drunk. And the way this is phrased, it makes us out to look like we're kind of preying on them and like forcing them to drink when they didn't want to, when that's not the case. And as I mentioned earlier, they were even the ones asking to play the drinking games by the texts before they had even arrived. So, Katie Bugs, maybe if you didn't ask to play this drinking game with George not found and his friends, maybe you wouldn't be in this mess? Common sense, really. So then, this is when her most important claim happens. I'm just going to read the quote. She says, Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no and still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked it to be. Again, as I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere. When in reality, we'd been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. It was also around half an hour until I started moving my hand further up. And the way it's phrased just makes it seem like it happened pretty instantly and pretty quickly. There was nothing quick about it. It was very slow. And I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. Me and Katie were very touchy, very cuddly, and very slowly got more intimate. So being touchy and very cuddly while touching her clothes is in fact not sexual assault. I've always been overly cautious with consent and this is not just because I'm a creator. I've been like this since before I was a creator and I think that's just the way I am and just the way it should be. Nothing came out of nowhere. Everything progressed very slowly throughout the night. And also, before I continue, I want to make it clear that the furthest anything ever got was under the shirt touching and cuddling. Now, obviously, people don't typically ask if everything is okay, even such as touching someone's waist under their shirt before they do it. But in this case, I was extremely slow, and she was engaging with me the entire time, laughing, cuddling with me, and even playfully fighting me for the game that we were playing. Again, a quote that she said, he disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no. She's implying that I'm... It's with malicious intent and that she coughed out a no would also imply that I should be able to tell that she was uncomfortable with it. She says, later, he made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the game I was playing. Now, I actually remember this quite vividly. I remember she was playing the game and there were parts where it would be very easy to lose if you were distracted. 
And she's right. I did do that. There were points where she was playing the game and she was at a point where it was easy for her to mess up. And I would, for example, tickle her or like squeeze her. And I, when I did this, she would laugh. She would turn around and smile at me or she would play fight with me because I had just made her lose the game. She also says how, quote, I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. Now, to reiterate, any time that I did this, it was met with her either smiling, laughing, play fighting with me, and there was no reason for me to believe that she was uncomfortable with it. She was not not moving. She was not not speaking. Of course, I don't believe that silence is consent. I just want to make sure that it is abundantly clear. She was visibly and physically responding well to everything that we were doing. I also want to comment on how she said that she had to stand up after many minutes for, for it to stop. She did get up multiple times throughout the night. For example, to go to the bathroom, to get a drink. Also, when her friends left, she got up to say goodbye to them, and she would come back to the same scenario. I also just want to point out that her best friend was here during this whole process. Then afterwards, he did leave. And I think it is important to note that she made the choice to stay behind for many hours more. And as I mentioned before, she did get up, say goodbye to them, and came back. We were even talking about staying up to wait until 11 a.m., which was the checkout time of the hotel. Since it was the final day, we were like, oh, I don't know if we want to go to sleep for a few hours, might as well just stay up. But that's not what ended up happening. And it's at this time that Katie says that, this is a quote, I went to leave and the older guy then decided to leave too. This is phrased in a way that makes me look kind of creepy, to be honest. She's basically saying she left, so I decided to leave too which is not the case. What actually happened is Dream had decided he was too tired and was going to bed. So the night was over and we all left. She then goes on to tell a story about the elevator and how I joked about it being broken to try to get her to go in with me. So Katie actually had her own hotel room on the same floor as Dream. So she actually didn't have to take the elevator. She walked me to the elevator when she didn't have to and said goodnight to me, which was nice of her. I did joke with her about coming in the elevator by pretending that it was broken. I would essentially, I went into the elevator, the doors closed, and I would press the doors open button to make it open again. I did this a few times and she didn't go along with it, which I respectfully took, obviously, and ended up just going down to my room. So yeah, she, she didn't have to take the elevator yet. She chose to walk with me to the elevator to say goodnight to me, which I think is interesting given how she's saying how she was so upset with her but also i think these comments are her looking back on the night and not her actual feelings at the time and that's essentially the end of the story this is actually the last time i've seen her in person was just as those elevator doors closed that makes sense so katie bug slides that she stood up for many minutes for just stop. she only got up to use the bathroom get a drink and got up to say bye to friends which you'd normally do when you're hanging out. She wasn't leaving, and she and George were touching cuddly. And Katie Bugs was speaking to him. She wasn't uncomfortable at all. Katie Bugs was even playfully fighting with George not bound, so this is not sexual assault. So the question is, why did she have to lie in her first statement in the first place? Because for what it's worth, lying is bad, so this won't look good for Katie Bugs. We messaged for a bit after uh, through Instagram DMs and Snapchat. And uh, the way that we talked to each other was always pretty ban banterous. For example, after the first night that we hung out, but before the second, she'd actually texted me and said, you better not be in Dream's room tonight or I'm going to shoot your leg. Obviously, she's not going to shoot my leg. It's just, we're just messing with each other. And I'd actually responded to her and said, well, guess what? I'm actually here right now. And yeah, after this, we texted for a bit, uh, sometimes daily. Sometimes we would take a few days break, even a few weeks at some point. And at some point after VidCon, we were actually both in London at the same time. And she and she let me know this through her DMs. Now, I will say she didn't come out outright and say, I'm in London. But she did say that she'd gone to a place that was known to be a London thing. And I commented on that and said, and asked what she was doing in London. And just to clarify, we did not meet up whilst in London, nor make plans to do so. She was always 
extremely friendly to me. I was friendly to her. And honestly, I was very shocked to hear her say the things that she did say during her stream. When I first opened up her stream, it was, it was after she'd already streamed it, but not long after. So people hadn't yet made the connection that it was relating to me. And when watching it, I was like, I was actually interested. I was, I was thinking, okay, what's this going to be about? And then when she started saying more and more details, I realized, wait, this is, this is about me. I was, I was very, very confused, very shocked and didn't quite know what to think given I had no impression of any wrongdoing throughout this whole relationship that I had with her. Not at all. Like it was, if anything, it was the opposite. I thought we had a pretty good relationship. Despite the fact that we actually hadn't talked in a while, I thought if I had seen her in in real life again, everything would be fine and we would be friends. It was actually around this point after the after VidCon had finished and we were messaging that I found out her age. And since then, I never pursued anything going forward and I essentially stopped messaging her. Her last message to me was August 1st, 2023, and I haven't replied to her since then. After I watched her stream, I was pretty confused. I didn't understand how her account of the story had been so different from what actually happened. A lot of the facts that she said just didn't happen at all or were phrased in ways that just make me look as bad as possible. Saying things like, um, I insisted on her playing drinking games or that she was frozen in place or that she was scared. She was having fun. She was enjoying herself. She was showing this with her body language, with the way that she smiled, the way that she laughed and just her overall general demeanor. And one thing that I think is very important to differentiate here is that I do believe that she regrets being affectionate with me. And that that really does make me feel terrible. I never want to make anyone feel uncomfortable or regret their interactions with me or anything along those lines, regardless of if it's sexual or not. And I am truly, really sorry if I contributed towards that. But what's important to differentiate is that she was uncomfortable with this after the fact and not during. She says, quote, at the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky that it had happened to me. I was excited to be around such big creators to be at that convention in general. Now, actually, I've had a similar scenario to this where I was in a sexual, I had a sexual experience with someone where in the moment I was perfectly happy with it happening, but then afterwards I regretted it. And I'm not saying this to get any form of sympathy. I'm not looking for that. That is not the case at all. I'm simply saying this because I can see the similarities in the situation. Now, I'm not mad at the person that I was in this sexual experience with at all. I have no negative thoughts on them. I simply did not like how it ended up. And if I could go back and not do it, I wouldn't have. I wanted to do it in the moment, but then change my mind later, which is completely valid. You're completely allowed to feel that way. But what isn't okay, and I think is just completely unfair, is to act as if I am the bad person in this scenario because you changed your mind later. Exactly. That's what she is doing on her screen when she gives her side of the story. She acted like George Nathan was a bad person because of the way she felt when she visited London, England. I also want to separate this from abuse and certain scenarios that other people have dealt with recently or just in general. I think it is completely fine to come to terms with your abuse over time and realize that it was bad for you and a terrible situation to be in and to then look badly back on that person. That is completely valid, but this is different. Again, this all happened within a four hour period, three, four hour period. And I was not given any sign of discomfort, unhappiness or anything along those lines. And again, it was the opposite of that. She was happy. She was laughing. She was smiling. And as far as I know, everyone else in the room would have thought the same at the time. So now what I'm thinking is why would she come out and say it like this? Why is she saying this? Because she wants to ruin your Minecraft gaming career. That's why she came out on stream 18 days ago, the first side of the story. 
Now, I don't think she's purposefully being malicious or trying to hurt me or ruin my career or anything like that. But what I do think is that she is surrounded by a friend group that completely despises me and my friend group. Her friend group is bad and they want to do everything in their power to help Katie Bugs destroy George Nutbound's career. That's all there is. And this is quite a specific scenario that probably doesn't really happen that much, especially publicly. So it, it's kind of we, it's kind of hard to talk about it. But I think after VidCon, she obviously had told some of her friends about what happened. Whether or not that was in a negative connotation, I do not know. I wasn't part of these conversations, of course. But she fully told them about this scenario. And when these people that are around you all completely despise me and my friends, they're obviously going to look on this poorly. To add context to this, she actually mentions in her stream, I will just quote it. She says, I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby on the way, and they were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk, and, I, and it was an eerie feeling like they could sense something was wrong. Now, this person is in Katie's friend group, and they were concerned that a group of five people were going up to Dream's room to join three additional people, which is an, an interesting concern to have. I actually have heard from another source that overheard this conversation and thought it was quite strange that she was worried about this. Now, I think it seems very likely that after eight months of you being around friends that hate me and my friends and constantly talking badly about us publicly as well and privately, I don't know what they say privately, but can't be any better than what they say publicly. Obviously, that is going to affect the way that you view the experience. And it's going to make you look at it differently. You're going to second guess it. You're going to be thinking about it. And clearly, it changed the way that she thought about it. And I just think it's completely unfair to judge me and my actions based on how you feel about it now, eight months later, versus how you felt at the time. Because at the time, you were not uncomfortable with it. And I know I'm repeating myself a million times, but I have to. You were smiling, happy, laughing, playing along with it, everything. And that's all I really have to say on the matter. Still keep supporting victims. The fact that Katie Bugs had to lie about her story to convince many people to believe her is why real sexual assault victims won't be able to come out with their story. Because people like Katie Bugs will just lie by lie and they will rile up every Minecraft supporter on this planet to immediately believe the victim right away without any proof of evidence whatsoever. There's so many holes in her story and quite frankly, I think she only did this to get the clout that she needed. And at the end of the day, you shouldn't support the victim if they only told a story without any evidence to back up their claim. You should only, and I mean only, support the victim if they have all the evidence that backs up all of their claims.